Hey guys, it's me, Jimmy, and today we're making a Bob's Burger sign, but not the Bob's Burger sign that says Bob's Burgers, but a different Bob's Burger sign. Stick around to find out which one. Okay, now I know that in my last video I said I was going to make the Bob's Burgers sign that says Bob's Burgers on it because it's an easy build, and trust me, it is. I made it before. It really is an easy build. But while researching Bob's Burgers to check the font and the size, I ran across a different sign. Yeah, that is not true. If that were true, you'd be watching one of those 10 hour long videos of me saying nothing but Bob's Burgers. I swear it's not true. Just get out of here. Anyway, anyway, while researching, I came across a different sign, the sign of the Sand Flea Motel. This sign, yes, is in fact from Bob's Burgers, more specifically season three, episode 23, where it makes like a whopping screen time of like, uh, I don't know, five or 10 seconds. It's really not up there that long. And as far as I know, it is probably the first and only time the Sand Flea Motel makes an appearance, especially this sign in Bob's Burgers. But it was within that short five, 10 seconds that I fell in love. Just look at it and all its vintage, curvy beauty. Anyway, anyway. It, it, it's a cool sign, all right? I seen it, and I thought, you know what? Let's throw caution to the wind. We're going to make this sign. So let's do it. So let's talk about wood. I got two 1x12x2s and one 1x5x2. These were scrap pieces from my local lumber yard, and they cost me a total of $4.48. Under $5? That's pretty awesome. The very back part of the sign, I just kind of eyeballed and came up with a shape that looks like this. This was on the first one by 12 by 2, and on the other one by 12 by 2, I made shapes like this. The angled edges were just eyeballed. The top one goes about a foot and three inches across, and the other one stretches the whole board, so it's two feet, with a height of about four and a half inches each. Now, I made all these cuts using my jigsaw by hand, and they turned out pretty good, but if you want a nice, clean, smooth cut and you have it, I definitely recommend a table saw and a chop saw to do these cuts. All right, guys, we don't even need the 1x5. We only need a couple small chunks, which you can get from one of the 1x12s. So let's remove that, which brings our cost down to only 350 How rad is that? All right, well, once you cut your pieces out, they should all look something at least similar to these. Oh, yeah, the, this little piece. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. So when you lay your pieces out to make it look like the sign, the shape of it all is similar to this. And this is actually the pole that holds the entire sign up. It's just a little detail, but you know what? I decided to just go for it anyway. To get started, we're going to tape in um, this angular back piece here, about a quarter inch in. And we're going to give a good few coats with this antique white. Uh, probably about three. I had to do about four to cover up all my extra pen and marker marks. So, you know, there's that. This is an English navy blue. I'm going to coat this a good three times. I, I lay my stuff on pretty thick because uh, I've been patient, but it just makes for a longer dry time. So, you know what? You just kind of trade one for the other. Watch all the drippy edges. You don't want those. Coffee. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, okay, moving on with pool blue, which is what we're going to use for the bottom part of the sign. I just drop a bunch of that on there and smear it around with my brush, as is my technique. And as usual, I do about three to four coats on this. Uh, you can do it at two or three, I suppose, if you don't have all the marker and pen on yours like I do on mine. And be sure to clean up the drips on the edge, and voila! We're going to move on to this little part, which is the, uh, the, the, the sign pole piece that goes in between the two the top and the bottom part of the sign, I have pewter gray, which is what I use for this. Uh, you're going to need a lighter gray too, I suppose, but I just mix it later. You'll see why. Um, anyway, we're going to tape off the opposite side now of this sign, and we are going to take the X-Acto knife and cut along the paint line to remove any of the excess tape. And I believe the color I have for this is just a bright red. We're just going to use a bright red. Typically do three or four coats. I think I ended up doing about five or six coats on this because I had so many deep pen marks and this red does not cover very well to be honest with you. Um, but it looks really good. It was a good red. Focusing back now on the dry pieces of the sign, we are going to take that pewter gray and mix it with some white to make it lighter because the edges of the signs are a lighter gray than the gray of the pole. Um, now I just mixed mine with white. You can buy a lighter gray, but make sure you mix enough to coat all the edges of all the pieces of the sign. 
Now, I'm not going to show you, of course, me doing this to every bit of the sign, but you're going you're gonna to want to go and do all the edges of all the signs, uh, probably two coats. I did one with some touch-ups, but I honestly probably should have done two coats, but I'm impatient. That's just what I do. As far as the font of Sandflea, um, this I found to be just a brush script STD font. It looks insanely similar. So if it's not the exact font used, I'd be really surprised. I printed up uh, the outline of it and taped it, center the sign the best I could and used a pen to kind of etch it in there um, and then just kind of painted in the lines I then created. Now, in the end, I actually ended up coating this with a glow-in-the-dark paint. You don't have to do that. Um, I've never seen it glow-in-the-dark because my room doesn't get dark enough. But, you know, I guess the option's there if you wanted that. Yeah, I don't know. It just seemed like a cool idea at the time. And for this, I believe I used antique white as well. It was the same color that we used for the back part of the sign. So, pretty simple. Man, we are so close to done. This goes so quickly, guys. Voila. Now when it comes to the motel lettering on the sign, I just went on my computer and found a basic bold block font type. I don't know, those block types, they all look the same. Just find one that looks pretty similar. So I print up the outline, cut them out with scissors, and I'm going to put them on this pink foam, and I'm going to trace them to the best of my abilities. And now you could probably use an X-Acto knife or maybe like a foam cutter if you got it or something. But um, yeah, I, I do have an X-Acto knife. I don't have a foam cutter and I'm not really sure of my knife abilities. So I just use scissors and it turned out just fine. So you know what? You guys do you. Uh, do what works best for you. I'll do what works best for me. And yeah. And of course, they can't make this sign simple. Look at this. Look at it. It's two-tone pink. Yes, that's right. We now have to take and carefully paint in the center of each one of these letters with a hot pink color. Now, technically, I guess you don't have to do this. You get away with not doing it, and I think it would look perfectly fine. But, you know, I'm kind of a stickler for things like this. That's what I'm going to do. Now, I'm using a fluorescent glow black light pink, but you can get away with using any hot pink color. And just like the glow-in-the-dark paint I used earlier, I probably will never use either one of these but they'll give me a good idea on how they work for future sign builds. All right, well, now that that's done, let's focus our attention down on the bottom of the sign where it says Color TV. I'm just going to kind of freehand this with a pencil, and then I'm going to do more of a solid outline with a Sharpie marker, learning my lesson from last time. <laughs> then using my X-Acto knife, I am going to carefully cut out the letters. When you're done cutting your letters, peel them up, leaving the centers of the O's and the R. <laughs> All right, once you've peeled off all the letters, go ahead and give it a good couple of coats with the antique white. Once that dries, you're going to want to peel off all the tape. And don't forget the center of the O's and the R. When it's done, it should look something like this. When it comes to the other side of the sign where it says budget prices, the font is so thin, I highly recommend just freehanding this with a brush. That is, of course, unless you're me. Then don't freehand. Yeah, because look at how wonky the word budget looks. Oh, it drove me nuts. God, it drove me so nuts. But I fixed it later on. It was fine. Oh, and in case you're wondering, that little bit of tape is there to let me know where the word motel ends. All right, guys, now I believe that's the last of the painting. We only have a couple more things to do, and the sign is finished. Okay, next we're going to take this craft bond spray adhesive, and we're going to spray the backs of the letters, and then we're going to place them onto the board. When you spray this stuff, you're going to want to do it like outside or in like a well-ventilated area. Not in like a small room, like a desk and stuff. It feels pretty Okay, all joking aside though, just don't spray that indoors for safety reasons, and you just don't want it to get all over your stuff. Anyway, this is pretty much how everything should be looking on your end, okay? You know, something like this. I'm going to find a way to seat it all together, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some hot glue and glue it all in place. Now, this isn't like a permanent bond. This is not what I'm trying to do to keep the entire sign together, but I want everything to stay in place so that I can flip it all over to put in some screws for a permanent hold. This way, nothing's going to shift on me and, and go into awkward positions or, you know, whatever. 
Once I turned it around, I did use a little bit of glue just to keep that one little tiny piece in place because it's not that big of a deal. But I used two screws to hold the top part of the sign together and three screws for the bottom because it's got that little bit of extra weight on the one side it's got to support. It's not that big of a deal. You'll also notice that I put that little chunk of wood on the side so that the sign hits the wall evenly. All right, now you're gonna take a drill with a small drill bit to drill some pilot holes for the screws, which by the way, are an inch and a quarter screw. And I set the drill bit to be the same length as the screw. So when I drill into the planks, I'm not going all the way through. Drill out all the holes and then go on ahead and put all your screws in. Yeah, and you know what? Learn from my mistakes. I'm sure you're gonna notice here in just a second that if you're gonna use a cordless drill, make sure your battery's charged. Otherwise, you're gonna be trying to do some ratchet action to try and get through your project. Sometimes it works and other times it's just a complete failure. Like me trying to put in that last screw. I know you've seen that. And ba bam, we are done. Look at how good that looks, guys. That's all. Uh, no, don't don't look at that. I said I, don't look at Oh, come on. And wa bam. Here we are, guys. The San Flea Motel. It turned out amazing. I love the sign so much. I even fixed the wonky budget a bit. It's not nearly as bad. Anyway, if you guys made the sign at home, be sure to send me some pictures. I want to see how well you guys did on your sign builds. I should have some links down in the description below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down is perfectly fine. Go ahead and comment some sign build suggestions down in the comments. And be sure to set up notifications and subscribe if you want more videos. I will see you guys next time. Thank you all so much for hanging out and watching. I love this sign. It's turned out so good.